Just a brutal, brutal loss for the San Francisco 49ers on Thursday night football against the Tennessee Titans. You're watching the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I am your host, Jay Senior. Coming up on today's show, a 49ers postgame show where we break down this game and answer all of your questions from the audience. Final score of 20 to 17. And at the end of the day, this is a bad loss for the Niners. This game was there to be had on multiple occasions for San Francisco. They take a 10-0 early lead when in reality that lead should have been built up to 14 points. Jimmy Garoppolo threw that red zone interception to Jack Rabbit Jenkins on that pass intended for George Kittle. And after that, it's not like necessarily the momentum changed at that point, but there was a sequence of events that kind of allowed the momentum to be catered to the side of the Tennessee Titans. Jimmy Garoppolo in the first half also missed Kyle Juszczyk on a wide open pass that would have gone for an easy touchdown that also would have built the Niners lead to a couple of touchdowns. But the danger in making a bunch of mistakes in committing those self-inflicted wounds against a very good team that is a physical squad that is still in the playoff hunt in the AFC, leaders of the AFC South, is when you let them hang around, they will come back to bite you. And while the Tennessee Titans didn't do anything offensively in the first half, they made some adjustments. Ryan Tannehill was really good, especially on critical downs on third down, and A.J. Brown one-on-one -on -one against Josh Norman was a disaster for the Niners all throughout the evening. Now you take a look at the NFC playoff picture following this Niners loss. Now they have the tiebreaker over the Minnesota Vikings who take on the Los Angeles Rams this weekend in Minneapolis. That's going to be a big game both for the Rams and the Minnesota Vikings. The big thing here to continue to monitor is that San Francisco does have the tiebreaker over the Vikings as well as the Philadelphia Eagles who are also in the hunt at seven and seven. But if you win this game to move to nine and six on the year, you make the NFC West conversation a lot more interesting because the Rams, I'm not buying into them. I think they're somewhat fraudulent. And I can say the same about the Arizona Cardinals because they have really struggled over the last couple of weeks. The good thing for the Niners is that they come back home after this short week trip cross country to Tennessee in Nashville. They come back home to take on the Houston Texans. A golden opportunity to win that game to move to nine and seven on the year. Then week 18, you take on a Rams team that you have owned under head coach Kyle Shanahan. Before we continue to break this game down during our post game show, I know the Niner gang is fired up because this game was there to be won for San Francisco. Jimmy Garoppolo came up short. Tennessee offense able to make some adjustments in that second half. And they really were able to gash that Niners defense on third downs. And the offense, after taking that 10 0 early lead, didn't really do squat. Give me your one word reaction to describe how you're feeling right now and get those one word reactions in in the comments section right now. Now let's start to take some of these questions from the Niner gang. A bunch of questions coming in. A bunch of super chats coming in. This one, $99 from Chris Lauderay, the great mother of producer Jack Lauderay. Hi, Chase. Sorry for the results of the game, but the show is awesome. Your energy is incredible. So fun. Merry Christmas to you and a happy new year. Safe travels. Merry Christmas to the Lauderay family. Continued health, wellness, happiness, and prosperity to you and everybody watching here on the 49ers Report. I hope all of you have a great Christmas. EBC with a question. This game showed us how overrated Fred Warner is and Jimmy Garoppolo plays like a veteran who still makes rookie mistakes. Start Trey Lance right now. Really, seven points in the second half. So Fred Warner is paid as the second highest paid linebacker in the National Football League behind Darius Leonard. And you take a look at both of those players. Darius Leonard is in the running for Defensive Player of the Year, whereas Fred Warner has taken a clear step back in his production and level of play this year. And it is certainly, no doubt about it, a big problem. As for Jimmy Garoppolo, even though Fred Warner has improved of late, I'll give him that he hasn't lived up to those expectations of being that premium player that the 49ers have paid him to be. For Jimmy Garoppolo, when Jimmy Garoppolo is playing really well, he's excellent. And that drive, 95 yards to tie the game at 17, was terrific. 
And at the end of game and in two-minute situations, Jimmy Garoppolo looks to be a fantastic quarterback. And when he's humming, when he's in rhythm, when he's playing well, he looks to be truly elite. From weeks 8 to 15, according to the data, he was the most efficient quarterback in the league. But when he plays poorly, when he's off, when he gets pressured, when he's not comfortable, he goes from being a very good quarterback to looking like Nick Mullins. And that's the problem with leaning on a quarterback like Jimmy Garoppolo in the heat of a playoff race. Because tonight, you needed him to come through, and he didn't. Jimmy Garoppolo tonight was bad, and there's no other way to put it, and I imagine he would tell you the same. 49ers Post Game Show, brought to you by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Right now, they're offering a 125% deposit bonus. Just go to chatsports.com slash 49bet. Enter the promo code Niners125. You put in $100, you get an additional $125 back. George Cribb with a $5 super chat. I'll drink to all of these after. I'm making a new movie called Waking the Titans, Jimmy G. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo helped wake the Tennessee Titans up. The Tennessee Titans didn't do jack shit in the first half of this football game. And the Niners really played great defensive football. You have to give them credit. I said this during our watch party. You can't really rely on the defense to play lights out football from minute one to minute 60. At some point, the offense had to help them out. And the offense did not help that defense out enough. They were able to get good interior pass rush. Nick Bosa didn't log a sack, but he was in there on a couple of plays. Anytime you have A.J. Brown, a premier wide receiver against Josh Norman, you're going to get cooked. And that's what happened to San Francisco today. And the secondary thinness of it because of the injuries really did show today. Ambry Thomas, I thought he played well with a couple of pass breakups, able to recover from a down last couple of weeks. Paul Fowley. How can the 49ers beat the Rams, Falcons, and Bengals, but not the Tennessee Titans? Look, the Tennessee Titans are a 10-win football team right now. They are leaders in the AFC South. When they had Derrick Henry, they went on the road, dump truck the Los Angeles Rams, and have a couple of very good wins this year. Now, they have lost a couple of games. New York Jets, Houston Texans, but they're very well coached. And Mike Vrabel doesn't get enough credit for how good of a coach he is, because all the man does is stack up dubs. And the Tennessee Titans also made a lot of defensive adjustments. After the Niners take that 10 0 early lead, they made some adjustments, and the Niners after that couldn't get anything going on the ground, and they really struggled through the air, and they confused Jimmy Garoppolo a lot. So let's not just say that the Tennessee Titans are a garbage football team. They have 10 wins in the AFC. Angel. Can you tell all the fans to be happy from the effort and not pissed off just because they lost this one game like the season isn't over? Go Niners. Angel, I see where you're coming from, but here's the problem with you saying that. If you win this game, you improve your record to 9-5. and five. You are basically a shoe-in to make the playoffs. Now, while you control your own destiny, and that's a great thing, you have to take on the Houston Texans. And you have to go on the road to take on the Rams. And it is not promised to you that you make it into the playoffs. And by winning this game, you also improve your playoff positioning. So let's say you finish at 6th or 7th place in the NFC. You might have to go on the road to take on a Green Bay or a Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I like how the Niners match up against the Dallas Cowboys in a road game. But against a very good Packers team, I understand you went toe-for-toe -toe with them earlier on this year, but you were at home for that. So there are reasons to be frustrated because this game was there to be had for the Niners. And like they've done so often in their losses, bang, bang, they shoot themselves in the foot. So let me ask you this moving forward. Your level of confidence in the San Francisco 49ers. Scale it for me from 1 to 10. With this loss, they are now 8 and 7. So 1 being you're not confident at all, 10 being you're very confident. Right now, after this defeat, the Niners have a 72.3% chance to make the playoffs according to the data. Pretty good opportunity. But if you won this game, you would have been 80 to 90%. Adrian Avila. Now do you think we should have picked up Brashon, uh, Brashad Breland? Okay, yeah. Um, I'll correct the spelling there. Brashad Breland, yeah. We talked about him earlier on in the channel. So, Earlier on this week. So, I mean, if you t if you bring in Brashad Breland, 
I don't know if he plays this week. Like, I really don't. Because in the span of a couple of days, he would have had to mastered the defense. He would have had to been all over the playbook. And I don't expect him to do a better job on A.J. Brown not knowing the defense than a guy like Josh Norman. Now, moving forward, does this change how the Niners are thinking about that secondary? Potentially. But this secondary is extremely thin. There's no way around it. We've been talking about it for weeks. And really, the Niners' defense has to rely on the defensive front to get pressure to take the pressure off of that back end. $5 super chat coming in from Luca. Garoppolo reminds me of Nick Foles, just works in clutch situations. He makes so many mistakes when quote-unquote comfortable. Yeah, it's not a bad comparison because Nick Foles has had one of the most Jekyll and Hyde careers of any quarterback in the history of the NFL. I mean, there was one year when he threw 27 touchdowns and two picks. Then he goes on to be the starter for the Rams, and he's awful. And then after being a journeyman and thinking about retiring, he comes back to the Eagles and relief duty wins a Super Bowl, and now you don't even hear from him anymore. I think Gar Garoppolo is the more consistent long-term starter. And again, like the good with Garoppolo, 95 yards right down the field to tie this game at 17. The bad with Garoppolo, throwing that pick in the end zone on that pass intended for George Kittle early in this game, when you can make a statement right there maintain momentum and not give the ball game up and then that pick later he just floated that ball way over the head of Debo Samuel like the highs with Garoppolo are great the lows are so low and the lows were exposed tonight so the road to 50,000 subscribers here on the 49ers report is on during our watch party we picked up Let's say, I don't know, 600, 700 new people here on the 49ers Report. For those of you who are subscribed to the channel, you can continue to count on us to churn out free daily videos and win or lose, playoffs or not, we have you covered during the year and outside of the year. Subscribe to the channel if you want the best 49ers coverage on YouTube. Antonio Monroy with the $5 Super Chat. Aren't we a running team? How many, team, how many times have we run the ball? Typical Shanahan choke the game up 10 nothing. run the ball, stick to your identity, shaking my head. So I actually want to give credit to the Tennessee Titans for some of the adjustments that they made. First couple of drives, the Niners owned this game, and they looked fabulous. They were doing whatever they wanted on the offensive side of the ball. Garoppolo was good. He started the game 7 of 7, 8 of 8 before he threw that pick in the end zone. The Niners were able to get whatever they wanted through the ground game. But then Tennessee started to stack the box a little bit. They adjusted that defense. They took the run away, which is what then led to Jimmy Garoppolo not playing well because he was forced to throw the football far too often, and that's what happened in this game. I'm not going to say that Kyle Shanahan choked it. Look, I want to say it again. Mike Vrabel is an excellent coach, man. All he does is win, especially when his team has their backs to the wall and they had their backs to the wall tonight. They came through with the dub. Niners didn't. $5 super chat from Dave in the Desert. Last one in this post-game mailbag. Jimmy G was bad, but Kyle's play calling was off as well. He knows better than to rely on Jimmy's arm. Look, I just got done explaining that. Like, you had to rely on Jimmy Garoppolo's arm because the Tennessee Titans had taken the run away. Now, Jeff Wilson played well. If you have Elijah Mitchell, is this game different? Does Kyle Shanahan rely on the ground game a little bit more? Potentially. But I think some of the credit should also be given to the Tennessee Titans for the adjustments that they made. Mike Vrabel, Bill Belichick, disciple, former Super Bowl, multi-Super Bowl winning linebacker. Like, you got to give them credit sometimes because sometimes it's what the other team does and not what the other team doesn't do. So once again, confidence level in the 49ers, the last two weeks of the year. Scale it for me from 1 to 10. Texans at home, Rams on the road. Got to basically win out or win one of two to lock down a playoff spot. Obviously, that depends on what other teams do as well. Scale it for me from 1 to 10. And thanks for watching our post-game show here on the 49ers Report.